Here's an example that will allow us to integrate the pressure in order to get the force acting on a surface. In this instance, we've got a triangular hatch on this tank. And the tank is full of SAE30 oil. And that oil has a density of 891 kilograms per cubic meter. So it's a little bit uh, less dense than water. Uh, the area at the top of the tank is full of air and it's at a fairly high pressure, 80 kilopascals. And that's a gauge pressure relative to the external pressure in the air around the tank. And we'd like to figure out what the force is acting on this triangular shaped hatch in order to know how strong the fastenings are that have to, to hold it to the, uh, to the tank. Now if we look at it from the side, we can treat that triangular hatch as a flat plate and it's going to be subject to pressure all over the hatch. There'll be a pressure at the top of the hatch and at the bottom of the hatch, lower down in the oil, the pressure will be higher. And there'll be a linear variation with depth as we go down the, down the uh, height of that hatch. Now it's important to consider this as an integral because this is a distributed pressure force. We can't capture all of the information we need to understand by some equivalent point force as some of the techniques in your textbook will give you. So we want to do this as an integration. And it's an easy integration to do provided we've got some computers at our fingertips or it's a simple shape like a triangle like we have here. So let's set this problem up. Now we know that we're going to find that the force is equal to the integral over the surface of the pressure times an incremental area. Well given that this is oriented vertically then at any given height along that surface the pressure will be uniform. So we can consider a small region as part of our integration and that can be our dA. So our dA is going to be the width times the differential height. So our width, W, is something that we're going to need to know as a function of our vertical dimension, Y. But we haven't decided what the Y dimension is yet. Let's choose one that will make our pressure function fairly easy. So the pressure here is 80 kilopascals. So 80,000 pascals plus rho g times the depth under the oil surface here. So if I make y start at the oil surface and increase going down, then it's going to be just 80,000 plus rho g times y. So that makes our pressure function as a function of y much simpler than it might be otherwise. So we need to know what the width is as a function of y. Well it's going to be linear in y because this is a triangle so it goes from zero and it's linearly increasing. This is a straight line until we get to two meters wide down here. So it's going to be something times a factor of y and until we get up to y equals three there's no width at all. So at y equals three the width is equal to zero. So let's take y minus three. So that'll be equal to zero here and two there. And multiply it by whatever slope we need in order to go from zero up to two. So at two meters, so a total of five, so y minus 3 is 2, we should be 2 meters wide. So that's actually just a factor of 1 times y minus 3. So again, a fairly simple function for the width. So our incremental area for this, for this little chunk here, it's w wide by dy thick. So our dA will be equal to W of y dy or y minus 3 dy 
in the region that we're interested in, going from here to here over the surface of this triangular, triangular hatch. So now we can make this an integral in terms of y. We're going to go from y equals 3 to y equals 5, 3 meters under to 5 meters under. We're going to take the pressure, which is 80,000 plus rho gy, and then we're going to multiply that by the width, w of y, which is just y minus 3, dy. So there's the integral that we've got to solve. Now I can multiply that through. I'm going to wind up with a quadratic in y. And if I do that, I'll get the integral from y equal 3 to y equal 5 of 80,000 minus... 3 rho g times y plus rho g y squared minus 3 times 80 times 10 to the 3 dy. Or if I collect all the terms together, still integral from 3 to 5, 8741 y squared plus 53 times 778 times y minus 240 times 10 to the 3 all dy. So there's my quadratic. It's fairly straightforward to integrate a polynomial like this. I'm going to wind up with uh, 1 third y cubed by integrating this one. So I'll have 8741 divided by 3 which turns out to be 2914 y cubed. I'll have uh, a half y squared coming in here, so half of 53,778 is going to be 26,889 y squared minus 240,000 times y, because when I integrate a constant I just multiply by y. And that's evaluated at y equal to 3 and y equal to 5. And when I plug in some numbers for that, I wind up with 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 6. And that was force. It was pressure times area. The area dimensions were all in meters. The pressure was in pascals. So this is in pascal meters or newtons, because a pascal is a newton per meter squared. That seems like a pretty big force. But keep in mind that that's a pretty big hatch, too. It's two meters on a side. Or about 236 kilonewtons in manageable units. Now let's compare that force to what we'd get if we just took an average pressure at, say, four meters below the oil surface. So if we took an approximation with F equal to 80 times 10 to the third, that's our 80 kilopascals plus rho g times four, just the depth down to about the middle here, times a half base times height for a triangle. If I plug that in, I'd get 230 kilonewtons. So in this case, because most of the pressure is due to this high pressure in the air up here, and there's actually not much variation in pressure over the height, the two answers that we get, this exact answer from integrating over the entire area, and this approximate answer from just taking an average are very close to the same value. But in other systems that we're going to look at later, we'll find that we can't take this approximate approach and get anywhere close because we're going to see large variations in pressure over the surface. Now in all of these problems, the key thing is to remember that we're going to integrate the pressure over the surface in order to get the force acting on this hatch. In addition, we can also integrate the pressure to find any moments that are created by that pressure. 
And that'll allow us to solve uh, more complicated problems to figure out the forces necessary at given points of application, for instance, where we may have bolts holding the uh, hatch on in order to find out what those forces are in practical problems. We'll go on and do some more complex problems with forces and moments in our next examples.